Where does it look like we're at? I bet you can't tell. Well, Indianapolis and San Antonio, they both utilize drainage ditches and call them their body of water and have developed on them and around them. They've done a phenomenal job. People come from all over the, you know, the Midwest to go to those different areas. And I look at what we have, we have a real river that's four or five times as wide as that. It, it's got natural vegetation and natural wildlife. Why can't we do the same thing to a certain extent and, and utilize our, our river? Now imagine a little uh, seasonal diner out here where you had six tables, four top tables that just serve box lunches or something. Rivers connect communities. You know, water bodies are a place where synergy happens. <laughs> the Board of Water and Lake guy, that's hilarious. Under the Bonero administration, we have two goals. One is jobs and one is building a sense of place. Both converge, ironically, I think, on the river. I just got a text that says, wave to the Lansing Center, we are all watching. Just the mere fact that someone out of the private sector, under their own initiative, rented a pontoon boat and took 600 people on tours night and day for five straight days is, is quite an achievement. That's dinner. So the fish ladder's working. Things have changed. The quality of the water has come around, and if you get on the river, you get to see it's gorgeous. There's a lot here that we can benefit from. We need to focus on this, and I, I feel like the city of Lansing has started turning the river into a focal point. There's a lot of things being talked about, like the accident fund and the city market and the state police building. It's the other ripple effects where people start to value our water, and it helps the property values and, and everything else that's going on. The key is going to be uh, beginning to put together the public and private sector. The public sector can do some things things and that's appropriate. The time is now for the private sector to step up in Lansing and to step up and embrace the riverfront and go ahead, put projects together. We'll help with incentives and do the different things necessary. If you go up and down this river, it's been developed to a point of high density industrial and a lot of the buildings that we're looking at are vacant. They're rotting, they're in decay. A lot of the homes that are here along the Red Cedar and the Grand River, I'm not sure that people know they're on the river. Look at these homes. They're right on the water. Yeah. And I don't even know if they know they're on the water. I mean, look at the heavy vegetation here. If you advertise the home, downtown Lansing, on the Red Cedar, canoe to Michigan State, or, or boat to downtown Lansing, you know, people would laugh because they say, we really don't have that opportunity. We do. Uh, people just aren't aware of it. We need to use incentives, turn the buildings along the riverfront that are abandoned, turn them to face and front the river so that it's an inviting and creative environment for people to both live and work on the riverfront. Our people are starting to, to wise up and care about our river. It's time we have a plan. Rather than just putting our back to it or saying, God, wouldn't it be cool if we were San Antonio or Indy? But let's have a plan to make it better. It's absolutely incredible, the storyline that's going to be here in the next five to ten years for the city of Lansing.